Street's Men's Basketball Championship at the Venice Forum in Memphis, March 14th through 17th. Get on the priority ticket wait list today. Call 713-GO-COOS or go to uhcougars.com slash tickets. Students and recent graduates, Metro Live is giving away over $1 million to pay down college loans, and some of that is guaranteed for some Houston. You can enter in three easy steps. One, share a video of yourself telling why they like your inspiration for going to college. Two, show the green dollar sign tag top of the limited edition games in your video. And three, tag hashtag many stories, hashtag concerts, and hashtag go clues. Check out maddiestories.com for official rules. Nice.
Just fans, your attention, please. Please join the Cougar Brass in the playing of a University of Houston the alma mater. Yeah, then we're rehearsing now. You're watching Saturday Prime Time, presented by H&R Block. I don't have a monitor. Oh, there it is. This is the American on ESPN. Don Chaney here. The standings go a little something like this. Houston is leading the way with only a single conference loss. They've avenged that loss. Beating Temple, whatever, they're also the only team with one loss in the country. All right, glad to have you with us here. Reese Davis and Jay Billis for T to center, ready to go in this game. And 
Jay, Houston's ranked higher than it's been since the days of five slam a jam of the identity of this team's on defense. This is an outstanding defensive team. Their effective field goal percentage, number one in the country, one of the top ten defensive teams in the country by any metric. And they do it, graphic, they do it with their toughness and all that stuff. They rebound, they limit you to one shot, and they get out in transition. They're led by an outstanding guard in Corey Davis Jr., who is one of the best players in the American, one of the best players in the country. Top scorer for this team, outstanding shooter, has a mid-range game, a three-level scorer that has been a leader along with Armani Brooks. Two guys that can really drill it from three. And 26 points the first time they played, which you saw in the graphic. And coming in tonight, UCF has an opportunity to make the tournament. They're one of the last four in, according to Lenardi, but still a rather tall order for Houston tonight. <laughs> well, UCF is an excellent defensive team, and the biggest reason, literally, why they're such a great defensive team is Taco Fall. He stands seven foot six inches tall. Uh, he's got a standing reach of, what, an 8'4", or a wingspan of 8'4". And you have to have a game plan for when he's in the game and a game plan for when he's out of the game because he just covers up the lane and makes everything difficult to get to the rim. And that allows UCF to press up on three-point shooters, most specifically Davis and Brooks. This has become a hot ticket here in Fertitta Center where the Cougars have never lost. Maria Taylor is with us. Maria, tell us how it's fun to come to basketball games in Houston. Hey, Don Chaney is here in ML Carr. I don't know if you saw them. They're sitting right to our left. So Don Chaney, who played with uh, Elvin with Hayes, Hayes on the 68 team, coached in the, played for the Celtics, coached in the NBA for a long time. What are those shoes? Are those, uh... I can't hear you. Can you hear? No, there now, you I can. There yeah, now I can. What are you wearing? What are those? Nike? No. I just tried to talk back. Did you hear it? I can hear you and I can hear them.
ladies and gentlemen. At this time, will you please rise and remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem. The anthem today will be performed by Elmer Bondi Intermediate under the direction of Blaine Cohen. That was an anthem. All right, let's do it. All right. And now, let's make this coming light us. Brought to you by Light Storage. First, for the UCF Knights. A 62 guard, number one, B.J. Taylor. A 63 guard, number two, Terrell. A hazy day here in Houston, but the vision is clear for the University of Houston Cougars who have been dominant at home. Welcome to Saturday Primetime, presented by H&R Block and the American Conference on ESPN. Calvin Sampson and Johnny Dawkins meeting as Houston ranked eighth in the country, yet set to take on UCF. The Cougars own the nation's longest home winning streak at 33 in a row, and they sit atop the American Conference with a 14-1 and league record. UCF 11-4 and, and hoping to enhance its tournament resume by knocking off the Cougars today. Glad to have you with us. Reese Davis and Jay Billis here. The Cougars ranked eighth in the country, their highest perch since the days of Fi Slamma Jamma. But this team builds its identity on defense. Yeah, there's a reason they're 27-1, and one, and it's defense and rebounding. Kelvin Sampson has always been about toughness, especially on the defensive end. This team leads the country in effective field goal percentage defense. They're in the top 10 in just about every metric, and they're one of the best rebounding teams in the country, even though they're not one of the biggest teams in the country. And they're led by an outstanding guard in Corey Davis Jr., guy who's averaging 16 points per game. He's a three-level scorer. He's knocked down over 80 threes on the season. He can put the ball on the deck. An excellent shot fake. A very good mid-range game. And here on Armani Brooks are both outstanding three-point shooters that you UCF has to pay great attention to, force them to put it on the deck, get inside that three-point line. Well, Corey Davis, an outstanding player. They've got a lot of threats around the perimeter, but UCF also is a terrific defensive team. I mean, it, it's a mountain of a challenge when you go up against the Knights. Well, and you mean Taco Fall. He is 7'7". He's got a wingspan of 8'4", and he just covers up the rim, makes it impossible to get near the rim because of his shot-blocking, shot-changing abilities, and that means his team
teammates can really press up on three-point shooters, most notably Corey Davis and Armani Brooks. They've got to run those guys off the three-point line, funnel them into Taco Fall, and Fall has to stay out of foul trouble. One of the most difficult players in the country to officiate. Among the 40 tallest guys in the world, too. You know, this Fertitta Center used to be Hop Heinz Pavilion. Since they renovated it, the Cougars haven't lost here, 14 0. And Maria Taylor is with us. And Maria, this has become a hot ticket in Houston. You're right, Reese. But let me take you back to before when it wasn't quite a hot ticket. I spoke to Galen Robinson, who's a senior now, and he said there was a time when he could hear his mom's voice throughout the entire game because she was basically the only one in the crowd. He said they used to travel to fraternity houses and beg students to come out to games. In fact, Coach Sampson used to go on campus blitzes the day of games and try to convince students to come with a megaphone and the students reaction was hey coach we're trying to study and now they have a bunch of students coming up to them begging for tickets and opportunities to come to these games it's quite a unique environment and there's a lot of energy in here tonight guys well, I can tell you, Maria, it doesn't matter how many people are in a building you can always hear your mom's voice from the stands what did your mom yell at you from the stands? <laughs> no, she yelled at Coach K saying get him out of there <laughs> This is a great crowd, a bit of a late arriving one. More than 7,000 expected in here. Sellout capacity is 7,035. They're wearing red and had college game day in here this morning. And they are revved up for sure. As you look at Corey Davis, who's averaging 16 points per game. The 33 straight wins that I mentioned, the longest active winning streak at home in Division I. Not just here. They played some home games at Texas Southern while this place was being renovated and there is taco fall all seven six of him and in the least surprising stat i'll share with you today jay that is now the 28th consecutive opening jump ball won by taco fall it's just a, a wonder the referees can throw the ball up that high Fall has it inside and he'll turn it over with the travel an immediate double team when the ball went inside to Taco Fall. And UCF likes to start every game by throwing the ball into Fall and establishing him low. You see at the bottom of your screen, the Houston starting five, Galen Robinson, the leader at the point guard position, good shooters in Davis and Brooks. Robinson has improved his shooting, but not as eager to pull the trigger as his two backcourt mates. Though he takes the early shot inside and kisses the window. Nice drive and a little floater over the top of Fall. And UCF starting the game with Aubrey Dawkins guarding Corey Davis. Try to put a little more size on Davis, make him difficult for him to see over the top and get into his shot. Aubrey Dawkins, the son of head coach Johnny Dawkins, started his career at Michigan. He's really played well on the road this season, averaging about 18 per game. Shot on the way and knocking down the three is Colin Smith, the 6'11 redshirt sophomore. That's just his seventh three of the game, and he could tell right away that Houston was laying off him to be able to discourage the pass into Taco Fall. So he just stepped up and knocked that thing down. A good matchup among the point guards between Robinson and Allen. Terrell Allen, an excellent point guard, both in the top five in the league in assists. Shot clock going to five. Davis really not eager to challenge Fall, and he faded away and left it on the rim. Well, Allen lines one up. He's a 40% shooter, though judicious in his attempts. Only his 52nd attempt this year from behind the arc. Well, he's really worked hard to improve his shooting, and when he takes open ones in good rhythm, he's knocking down a very good percentage. But right now, at least you can tell in early on that Houston's going to go under ball screens. Fabian White from the corner. He's coming off the season high 16 point performance in East Carolina this week. Well, he's got a good face up game and a very good offensive rebounder. He went 7 of 10 in that game against East Carolina. And Taco had deep position, but he gets fouled. Just set a little rub screen at the elbow and immediately rolled hard to the basket. It's so hard to stay in front of him. Watch this little brush, and then he gets almost gets a switch, but got two guys playing one, and Robinson didn't get in from the opposite corner. He's got to be there to try to discourage that pass, and that's a that's a, a flagrant one. The referees, look they're going over to look at the monitor, but they should have been able to call that right away. I don't see how you have to go to the monitor for that. And Tony Green over there along with Zelton Steed. He's not making a play on the ball, just comes over and grabs him because Fall is not a very good free throw shooter. But that was an obvious 
flagrant one because it wasn't a play on the ball. Well, Taco had a good night from the free throw line against South Florida on Wednesday. He was six of eight from the free throw line, but he's only a 36% shooter on the season. So I understand wanting to make him earn it from the line, but they're having to look to see what the call will be. Yeah, it's got to be an F1. There's no, yeah. there's no discussion for this. I don't know why they have to discuss it so much. Now they're, now they're talking about it before they let it, let it be announced. Here comes Randy Heiberman over to, and as Jay said, a, <laughs> they came over to explain it. We don't need an explanation. We know what it is. Like, let's go. <laughs> don't, don't, don't hold the game up by explaining it to us. <laughs> Think how quickly that would have moved if they just inverted the process and come to you before they go and monitor. Well, you know what? You know what's funny though is I don't think they have to explain it to the coaches. The coaches know. I mean, you, they don't have to explain when somebody steps out of bounds. Hey, hey, coach, somebody stepped out of bounds. That means the ball's going to go to the other other team, and we're going to inbound it where it went out of bounds. He's falling the free throw line. Shooting under 40% as we mentioned earlier. You know, watched him shoot yesterday in practice shooting free throws and he actually makes a good percentage in practice. It's just carrying it over to the games. And fall makes one of two. You know, when you look at how big that his hands are relative to the ball. <laughs> It's probably the equivalent of you or me trying to shoot a golf ball. I mean, it is not easy. That late move that you see almost to get the ball higher in his fingertips is unusual. And Breon Brady took one in the chops. I don't think there was anything intentional about it. It's just the fact that he's 7'6", and Brady's still struggling to get to his feet. Yeah, and you wonder sometimes why if he... Uh... If Kelvin Sampson's going to ask, hey, wait a minute, did he take one in the chops there? Should you look at that too? Is that a replay? And, that, and they're going to go look at it. The double team comes over, and he did catch him with an elbow. The question is, were his arms more out than up? And they're going to go look at this one too. And my guess is this is going to be called an F1. Now, I think he should be allowed to turn around. But the issue is, were his, were his arms more up than out? If they are more up than out, then it's a legal play. If they're more out than up, it's going to be an F1. Boy, we are not starting off this game in a good place from a replay standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> we are seeing an awful lot of replay in this game. As you look at the play, Jay, and you explain the rule, should there be some type of adjustment to it? I mean, what should that be? Well, you know, there is a question as to whether the cylinder was violated there, whether where, whether the double team was in his space. And and I'm, I'm not a big fan of the cylinder rule, but I think you can make an argument that the defense was pressing up. That Look, they're straight up now. Is he in the cylinder? Looks like he is to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's got to be able to have some sort of movement there. And it's body on body there. And did, did he turn, first of all, was, I don't know, how, did he get hit hard enough to go down? It, look, there are a lot of things to assess here. This is not going to be easy for the officials. But, I mean, did, did, does that look like that was the kind of response warranted from that? I don't know, maybe, because uh, Taco Fall is awfully big. Well, the, the only thing I can judge by is, boy, it took, it took Brady a long time to get to his feet and get back down the floor. He's out there now. And, so it's nothing. Yeah, Breon to play on. Play on the dunk as a result of the play. And Brady, 6'8", 260 pounds, and just massively outsized by fall. So it's 6'4", UCF, and nearly going, and we're back to play, hopefully without any more monitor reviews. Don't have to look at the monitor on that one as Galen Robinson drains the three. Well, Keelan Robinson is such a good player, a senior that plays with an incredible amount of pride. He's been such a huge factor in the resurrection of this program under Kelvin Sampson. And a big reason why this team is 27 and 1 with his stewardship at the point guard position. Good pass. Hometown guy. Colin Smith has it roll out. And inside, Tony Green has a foul. And they're going to get Taco Fall. The guy who wore 24 back in his day at Duke, Johnny Dawkins, the head coach at UCF in his third season, already with his second 21 campaign in Orlando. His 
He's put his mark on this program with great defense in all of his seasons at UCF. Well, it's taken the program to heights this year it has not seen in a long time, if at all. They've got a great opportunity to make the NCAA tournament field. On the last four buys at the moment, according to our Joe Winardi, here's Corey Davis Jr. Ball fighting for the rebound, and Armani Brooks, who leads the team in rebounding, gets one on the offensive end. Boy, this team just chases after the ball, and Armani Brooks averages about six and a half rebounds a game from the guard position. Brooks off the window. One dribble, and he can really do things, and is so good from three-point range, especially in transition. And Armani Brooks has hit 96 three-pointers on the year. He leads the conference in three-pointers made per game. Terrell Allen lines one up and knocks it down. Armani Brooks went underneath, and Allen made it pay for it. And Allen looking to be aggressive. If he has an open shot, he's going to take it. They're not going to let Houston just sit back in the lane and sit in the lap of Taco Fall. If they get an open shot, they're going to they're drill it. Davis penetrates. That little runner has worked well for the guys driving the lane from the outside against the UCF big man. Well, Johnny Dawkins trying to tell his team, you can't let an opposing team go middle on you. It's too many straight line drives down the middle and little floaters over fall. Good move by the big guy. Taco Fall, who we saw had done a little work with Akeem Olajuwon. I'm not going to quite call that dream shake, but good footwork by the big fella. Well, he has been much better of late, more aggressive. He had 23 points, 20 rebounds against SMU, his first 20 rebound game. He's it for seven, 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 eight. I mean, he's so fluid. Davis and another offensive rebound for the Cougars. Rebounding always a staple of a Kelvin Sampson team. And though know, the Cougars aren't the biggest team in the world, they attack the glass with abandon. Good defense by Smith. And It'll be a turnover. Excellent defense by both. Armani Brooks, one of the best scorers in the American Conference. A 6'3 junior getting by Terrell Allen and just putting up that little kiss off the glass over Taco Fall. Houston with an early lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by H&R Block. In person or online, Block has your back. And in part by Smile Direct Club, delivering straighter smiles for 60% less. Can you hear me? Ladies and gentlemen, today we're recognizing. Yeah, barely. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Houston and UCF tied at 11. The Duke history goes back to the early 80s with Coach K's first great signing class, which included Jay Billis and UCF head coach Johnny Dawkins, longtime friends, went all the way to the national championship game in the 1986 season. Here, Jay and Johnny. Something looks different about Jay. I can't quite put my finger on it. 
but because of their relationship, Johnny's agreed to let Jay go over and sit by him. That's a big win for me from now until the next media timeout. Well, this is the first time I've ever been on the bench with Johnny Dawkins. He never was taken out of the game. <laughs> this on the alley-oop. And UCF has been talking to their teams, Johnny Dawkins and the staff, about getting on the defensive glass, trying to limit the offensive rebounding opportunities for Houston. If you're looking at the monitor, there they are, Jay and Johnny together as Johnny's coaching this team. Off to a much better start than when these two played in Orlando and Houston grabbed a quick lead and held it for the rest of the game. Built a 20-point lead in the first half as Rell Allen driving. Chris Harris has checked into the game, a young big man who's worked his way into the rotation of late for Kelvin Sampson. Chad Brown, an offensive rebound for UCF, and they'll get the fresh 30. And after that offensive rebound, it looks like B.J. Taylor had a very good opportunity for a three, just didn't quite pull the trigger on it quick enough. B.J. Taylor had 21 in the first meeting between the two. He was preseason player of the year in the Americans, had a solid year. Averaging 16 a game, shot clock's inside five, and the lob goes up. Colin Smith gets it, he's got to put it up. And Houston comes away with it. See if the Cougars get something in transition. Davis pulls up. And Reese, that was a real point of emphasis for UCF is to get back in transition and not allow Houston those transition threes because that's where the Cougars can be especially dangerous with Davis and Brooks, excellent three-point shooters in transition. Taylor puts his first shot up in the afternoon and Armani Brooks Gets it off to Robinson. Here come the Cougars. Robinson lost his balance. And he's hurt. Robinson went down and is still down. It's holding the back of his head, Jay. His officials go over to check on him. I think he might have taken a knee to the head. Jalen Robinson, a tough senior from right here in Houston, played at Westbury Christian. There's the stumble, and he, he kind of just fell into Aubrey Dawkins and clipped his knee, it looked like, the back of his head. So Galen's going to take a break, and Sampson has a deep bench, and he's bringing some guys off of it now. Dejan Giroux, transfer from UMass, is into the game for the first time, number 13, and a freshman, Nate Hinton, as you take a look at the day that Robinson's had, five points, a couple of assists in the early going. And Giroux is a really good player. He'll take over the point guard position as a starter next year. Reminds you a little bit of Quentin Rose plays at Temple. Really good player. Cedric Alley had the ball a moment ago. He's also checked in. Shot clock getting deep. There is Cedric. He's going to have to let it go. He dishes it off to Harris, and it'll be a shot clock violation. We told you off the top, both of these teams are excellent defensive teams. Houston leads the nation in opponent field goal percentage, and UCF is second in the American in that category. Both teams holding their opponents to under 40% as Allen gets all the way to the bucket, and the follow-up and stick back by Chad Brown. Boy, both Chad Brown and Colin Smith are huge factors in this game for UCF. Dejan Giroux. Uh, I think they're calling it, they're calling it on the, on Johnny, the floor. What, Here's Jay. Johnny, what's your message to your team going to be in this break? Well, we have to do a better job of keeping them out of our paint, and we have to make sure we don't give any second chance opportunities. Good luck. Thanks. Houston has the lead at home, the under-12 break. Back to Space City when you come back.
Aerial coverage is brought to you by State Farm, here to help life go right. They're fired up about Cougar basketball here in Houston. There was a golden age of University of Houston basketball from 1967 to 84. During that time, the team from the Space City was in that heavenly orbit. Only UCLA and Carolina made more Final Fours. It was during that time that they had their consensus All-Americans. The Big E who joined us on game day along with Akeem Olajuwon and Otis Birdsong, Clyde Drexler. Great players here as well. Maria's back. Well, yeah, Reese, and also this Houston team has gotten some advice, some great players that are right down the street. That's the Houston Rockets, James Harden, CP3, Eric Gordon. They've all come and spoken to the team. And Galen Robinson told me that one thing he remembers from CP3 was he was talking about a drill that coach put them through over and over and over again when he coached USA basketball. And Robinson said what he learned is everyone has to go through the process. We're going through the same thing that pros go through, and that means we're on the right path. So that really helps the buy-in when you have guys like CP3 talking to your team. Maria, there's no question. This has become a place where a lot of the pro athletes in Houston love to come and see games in CP3. We're sitting beside Akeem and uh, Don Chaney, the coach in the, in the NBA. Don Chaney played on that 1968 team with Elvin Hayes to beat UCLA in the Astrodome. Elvin Hayes is part of the radio broadcast team here at the University of Houston. Dejan Giroux, who did not complete that three-point play as a big fan, and Alvin Kamara, both are from New Orleans, and Alvin has been to see him play. A terrific drive, turning down the ball screen on the side. Cedric Alley came to set a side ball screen. It was refused with the drive baseline by Giroux. And the movement that Houston gets on offense is really impressive. This is a team that has grown up together. You know, they started out as freshmen and sophomores, some transferred in. But it was a, a difficult process to grow this program and establish a winning culture. And really, Kelvin Sampson has established a championship culture. But they're, they're impressive on the offensive end. How much of that, and we know Kelvin is a tribute, how much difference do you see from the stent that Kelvin has an assistant in the NBA as opposed to his times earlier at Oklahoma and Indiana. Yeah, I think it, I think they, their spacing is better. The, they move the ball a little better, much better cutting team. They were good offensively when he was at, you know, Oklahoma and Washington State and all that. I think they're a little bit more varied now. But one thing hasn't changed is this, this team fights, and they fight defensively. Just like UCF does, but both teams make it really difficult to score. They are not giving up many easy baskets at all. B.J. Taylor was fouled on his way to the basket. I mentioned before about Galen Robinson being a respected player in this league. Number one for UCF, B.J. Taylor. Talk about a respected player. This guy is, is one of the all-time greats at UCF. And I don't know anybody who's shot more free throws than he spent so much time at the foul line. Left well, that three a little bit short. That last foul was called on Cedric Alley, his first. A nice job by Davis of keeping his dribble. Giroux kicks it out to Hinton into the game, and Nate, a really good looking freshman guard out of Gastonia, North Carolina. A yeah, very talented player, Nate Hinton, but that shot. Probably would have been better served, even though he can make that challenge shot, would have been better served with a shot fake and a drive because that was a, what you'd call a contested jump shot. And I think the contest made it awfully difficult for that shot to be successful. 
Shot on the way and knocked in by Dayon Griffin, a senior from St. Petersburg. And again, Houston going under those screens and exchanges. And Griffin just pulled that trigger easily. What a move by Giroux. <laughs> Our friend Bill Raftery might have referenced lingerie on the tech. And Harris went strong. Chad Brown fouled him and will send Harris back to the free throw line. Watch here on this little exchange here. You're going to see underneath. You go under the screen, and then Griffin just pulls right up. Now, if you go over the top of it, hey, he may curl to the basket, but that's only given up a two, even if he can get it. And it's going to be a challenge, too. But that was a wide-open three. Well, Chris Harris is certainly a good-looking young player. He's worked his way into the rotation in recent days, really recent games over the last 10. But still, free throws are a struggle for him. Chad Brown goes to the bench with his second foul. Harris trying to chase down his miss as he goes 0 for 2, and Houston is 0 for 4 from the free throw line. But Harris just another big body that Kelvin Sampson can throw out on the court and try to wear opponents down over the course of a game. Nice play. Alley-oop for Aubrey Dawkins. Looked like he got hit when he was in the air. And Giroux is now working on Frank Burtz, who's into the game. It'll be out of bounds in UCF ball. From UCF to UFC. It's UFC 235 from Las Vegas. John Bones Jones defending his light heavyweight title against Anthony Smith. Tyron Woodley, the welterweight belt on the line against Kamaru Usman in the pay-per-view co-main event. ESPN, ESPN Deportes. The preliminary fights at 8 Eastern. To order the main card, ESPN.com slash UFC 235. We'll give you all the details. Jalen Robinson guarding B.J. Taylor. That's a terrific matchup. Good pass. Ball working on Bryson Gresham. And Gresham, a sophomore transfer from UMass, is going to be called for the foul. Got caught up on top of Taco Fall. And Fall did a good job of sealing off. And that was actually a good foul because that was a sure two points. You let Taco Fall catch it with a foot in the paint. He's two feet in the paint. It's over. Those size 24s. You let him get that close to the rim. You can forget it. On the fourth team foul. Dawkins really good at that, though. The shot didn't go. Catch and shoot. Now Hinton pushing it. He'll pull up. And Nate Hinton is an athletic wing that has all-around ability. And he is just in attack mode all the time. 18-16, the eighth-ranked team in the country, fighting off UCF. They built a big lead when they played in Orlando. 20-point lead in the first half, sort of cruised home. UCF here for a tougher fight today. UCF going for round one. Fall. Going to be fouled on the floor again, and Gresham's into the game, and two quick fouls on him. That four-round one set allows ball screens to be set and immediate cuts to the basket. First it was Aubrey Dawkins, then it was Taco Fall. Got picked up by Alley. Then on the drive, if you help up or help back out, he's going to be wide open. All you have to do is lob it up to the rim. They got him before the shot. Not in the one-and-one, one, only the fourth team foul. Or big, yes, four on both teams now. So a 20 on the clock. Griffin off the inbounds play. A pretty play. Aubrey Dawkins came off that screen by Taco Fall the first time they ran that play. And this time Griffin, who was ready to shoot when he caught it. Both he and Dawkins do such a good job of shot preparation. They are ready to shoot when they catch the ball. And Dejan Giroux was trying to find a little space and called for the walk. Taco Fall was there. He didn't get a blocked shot, but forced the turnover. And you see this play. Instead of Dawkins coming off, this time Griffin. And, man, that is a good-looking shot because he came off that screen to shoot it. If the shot's taken away, then you can make another move. But you got to come off to shoot it. They've done a really good job on Aubrey Dawkins so far. Jump hook from Taco Fall. Brady has it for the Cougars, and Davis will push it. Well, if you're going to guard Taco Fall in there, it's going to be you're going to take a physical beating. He is so strong. Ooh, Dawkins almost took that the other way. Hinton again. 
Well, that's how close it is to a bucket on the other end for Dawkins and a basket for Nate Hinton, the freshman from Gastonia, North Carolina. And his mid-range game is so solid as a freshman. And he's just going to continue to get better. Aubrey Dawkins. Can't get it to go. They're still trying to get him on track. Houston with the ball and a two-point lead. And UCF right now two points down, and neither B.J. Taylor nor Aubrey Dawkins has really gotten anything thus far. Product of that outstanding Cougar defense, and they knew who they were going to try to shut down and make others beat them. Samson, a meticulous game planner. Shot clock at five. Henton. Good defense. Boy, Griffin did a great job of staying down and not leaving the floor until Hinton did. Kelvin Sampson's team has a two-point lead, and when we come back to the Fertitta Center, Jay Billis will go 94 feet with Kelvin Sampson. Better than any coach of a coach of the year award you could get. What an honor. <laughs>94 feet with Kelvin Sampson brought to you by Smile Direct Club. What was your first job, non-basketball job, real job? Working at a tobacco market in Lumberton, North Carolina with my father. And how much did you make? Dollar and 35 cents an hour. <laughs> what was your first car? 1963 right. Ford Falcon, three in the tree. <laughs> what color was it? Uh, kind of a, a, a beige, tan, brown with a white top. Oh, cool. And you always played, you were a catcher, you were a quarterback, you were a point guard. Why leadership positions, do you think? Um, I just think I might have been the most coordinated guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, you of, when you have a lot of guys to pick from that were coordinated. <laughs> Those days are over. <laughs> Well, maybe the coordination on the court has suffered a little bit, but his coordination as a head coach is in peak condition. He has elevated this Houston program. He told us yesterday that at the stage when he decided to come back to college basketball, he needed to fix something. Well, he's fixed Houston. Look at what they've accomplished. And it's historic. I mean, going all the way back to the mid-80s when you had Akeem Olajuwon here and Clyde Drexler, all that stuff. Really remarkable, the job that Kelvin Sampson and his staff have done here. Really good defense as Breon Brady draws the charge, and this is a tradition for the Cougars. That's Kelvin's wife, Karen, who bakes cookies for the team before the game. They come over, they do a little film, they have a couple of cookies, and they are, they are spectacular, by the way. I've had well, two of them. Karen's spectacular. What a fantastic lady. And 
They have built this together. It's been a real family affair. As Corey Davis knocks down the shot, I do owe an apology to their strength coach, Alan Bishop. I referred to those cookies as a secret recipe to Houston success, and now he's been getting blasted by all of his fellow strength coaches across the country. Taco Fall can't get it to fall, and he'll go to the free throw line. And Kelvin Sampson all over the officials thinking that Taco Fall is pushing off down low. And again, the difficulty of officiating a player the size of Taco Fall, that if there was a, a player of a smaller player that was maybe doing the same things, it wouldn't be looked upon as being such a problem. But he is a problem because of his size. And he's quite mobile for his size, so it's not like he's a, a statue in there. Taco misses the first. Now watch Taco fall inside. Now he just sort of pushes off a bit, but now you're saying, hey, what is the deal with a guy that big doing that? It makes it a, a bigger problem when it's a physical position. Now, Breon Brady was called for that foul. He's the one that took one in the kisser that they looked at earlier and deemed it not to be a flagrant and tacos you get another opportunity a lane violations call all right here is a i've always thought i've never liked this this rule i think if there's a violation of the lane if the shot goes in unless there's a foul it should be no big deal it shouldn't be considered if the shot doesn't go in the violation affected the rebound so the non-violating team should get the ball not a, not another free throw so you got it again yeah. i mean you know, just give them the ball. This doesn't make any sense to me, but it's a rule standpoint. It's not, there's nothing on the officials. This is a rule issue. But Terrell Allen just went to Taco and asked him to follow through. He's got a, now a couple extra opportunities looking for that make, and he doesn't get it. Had four chances, didn't make any of them. And opposing teams violate because he's got a little hitch in his shot. And so they're getting in just a little bit early. Corey Davis turning the corner, gives it to Brady. Brady uses the left hand to keep it away from fall and hit every part of the rim but wouldn't go. And Brady, the lefty, took that shot a little bit quicker than normal just because of the presence of Taco Fall. Another, another time where he didn't block the shot, but he changed it. Baby and White to steal. Davis into the front court. Aubrey Dawkins cuts him off. And Terrell Allen doing a nice job of making Armani Brooks catch it out of an operating area, just extending that catch. And Davis can shake free. He's fouled on the three. And Corey Davis, who's an excellent free throw shooter at 87%, second in the conference, is going to get a chance to go and shoot three of them. Two straight Iverson cuts, one by Brooks, who curled the second screener up top, and then coming off the little screen by Brady, a really nice play by Corey Davis. Just got fouled when he went up. Yeah, this kid is a good player. He's fun to watch on the offensive end. Moves without the ball. You can take it to the rim, mid-range, three-point shot. He's got it all. He's coming off, matching his career. It's been a magic number for him, hitting 26 points. He had that earlier this week against East Carolina. His last three games, he's averaging 22 a game, shooting close to 60% from three. I think he's been 18 of 31 coming into this one from three in his last three games. Seeing a big bucket. Uh, he won't see many, many missed free throws from Corey Davis. Houston with a six-point lead at home back in 30 seconds to this American showdown. As soon as we finish here in Houston, North Carolina going on the road to Little John Coliseum in Clemson. Tar Heels have owned that series. They've won 10 of the last 11 against the Tigers. You can see that game on ESPN and streaming on the ESPN app. As always, the ACC standings, a three-way fight for the 
regular season title with North Carolina, Virginia, and Duke all separated by one game in the loss column. Aubrey Dawkins looking for his first bucket, and he's got it. It's a long two. And you know Johnny Dawkins called that play coming out of the timeout to try to get something for Aubrey Dawkins in rhythm because both Dawkins and B.J. Taylor have got to start getting involved on the offensive end and get more good looks in this ballgame. The first field goal for either, Jay, is Dejan Giroux. Somehow got out of there with the ball, no turnover, shot clock at five. When you drive it, you got to look to pass it out unless you can get something like that that is sort of a short runner that you can loft up over Taco Fall. Otherwise, you need to drive it and then look to pass it out. Davis now into double figures with 11. A little horn set coming off Taco Fall's side where he can just dive to the basket. Now he's in the low post. Giroux, who was harassing Taylor to keep him from getting a shot off. Colin Smith hit a three earlier, takes it inside, and Smith, the big 6'11 redshirt sophomore, is going to draw the foul as we go under the four-minute mark here in the first half. And we had a great morning here at the Fertitta Center of College Game Day. The dream, the Big E, and Jay will pick the Cougs today. <laughs> I don't know who eats the most cookies, but they play Uno when they go to Kelvin's house. And Hollis Price, who played for Kelvin at Oklahoma and works in the program here now, is the undisputed champion there. You know what? I'm getting a chance to call this game because you see a little guy in the stands here. Our good friend Dan Shulman and his wife Lauren just welcomed a new baby on Tuesday. Hudson Shulman was born a little before 6 a.m. in the morning. Dad looking on with pride. I, I was personally... Surprised and shocked they didn't name it Jay. <laughs> well, it's a very nice toque that uh, Hudson is wearing there, but congratulations to Lauren and Dan. Damn. That's just awesome. And Reese, how about, speaking of Dan Shulman celebrity, how about all the celebrities that are here? Not just Hakeem Olajuwon, Don Chaney, Elvin Hayes, but Warren Moon is here. Carl, Carl Lewis, Lewis yeah, addressed the crowd a few minutes ago. He's firing him up. With all his Olympic gold medals, with all these celebrities, you're only like the third biggest deal <laughs> in the room. That is unusual. 
Did you say 23rd by 3rd? You meant 23rd. <laughs> 3rd. Or 123rd. <laughs> Four point lead for the Cougs. Dan Lauren, congratulations. Hope Dan's enjoying watching. I'm sure he's critiquing every word I say. Shot clock getting deep. Dejan Giroux. Giroux covered up, has to force one up. And Houston got the offensive rebound, but Brady stepped on the baseline, so UCF will get it. Really good defensive possession by UCF. And the Knights are an excellent defensive team. The question is in this game, they're just down by four. This is a big portion of the game and a very important one. The last three minutes of the first half. Now can B.J. Taylor and Aubrey Dawkins establish some kind of rhythm, get something on the board? Dawkins from the corner, and it will go. Every shot has been tough for both teams, and sometimes you see a lower-scoring game and you think bad offense. This has mostly been good defense, it seemed to me. Well, and you've had a, a, a few possessions where shots have been rushed because you're not getting much that's open. And another whistle inside, and... Breon Brady. Uh, Breon's had a frustrating day trying to deal with fall. I can't. Have, it's like trying to guard a building downtown. And Brady doing the best that he can, but anytime you get stuck behind Taco Fall, you can't move him. And he puts those arms out, you're not going to get anywhere. Now, look, by rule, you're supposed to extend the arm. You know, you can't extend the arms. You can put your arms out with your elbows, and then your arms have to be up from the elbows, but good luck getting that called all the time. Taco now one for five from the free throw line as he misses the front end. Harris with the flush. Giroux got the switch and then immediately put the ball on the deck to get by Colin Smith. And then Taco Fall deciding that he didn't want to risk a foul. Dejan Giroux is instrumental down the stretch in the big win they had against Cincinnati. Taco Fall, thank you very much. Hey, what a pass by Smith. Knew that he had drawn two defenders and immediately just put it up by the rim. That zone right now by UCF. 2-3. So you still have to be able to drive gaps and then kick it. Make two play one. And the three ball knocked in by Dejan Giroux. Well, how good is this guy going to be? From New Orleans, started his career at UMass here. He and Bryson Gresham that you saw earlier decided to come back closer to home. And Giroux has been a big part of this team coming off the bench. Going to be the leader for them soon. Seven-point lead for the Cougs. Double team on fall. Alan Smith lines one up. And Davis has it. Jay, you mentioned important last 80 seconds here for UCF. Boy, what a job by Corey Davis. Both he and Giroux went after that defensive rebound so hard. It was those two going up against Aubrey Dawkins. And Davis came away with it. And that was just a rip and go. When he gets the rebound, he can bring it up as a point guard. And it becomes a dangerous scorer in transition. And I love watching this guy play. Just a dead-eye free throw shooter. Shoots almost 90%. The last time these two teams played, he had 26 points, five assists, went nine of 12 from the free throw line. If he makes this free throw, he's going to be on target for another 26-point day. He's got a dozen to lead all scorers. Just a complete guard. He's missed a couple of free throws today, which is highly unusual. Eight-point lead for the eighth-ranked team in the country. E.J. Taylor. Draws contact from Giroux, and in the NBA, they would have given that to him. Probably should have given it to him in college, but a you know, terrific shot fake by Taylor to get the defense off balance. Really set himself up nicely and got Giroux off balance on the closeout. I'm not sure that wasn't a bucket. Uh, Taylor. Well, he spends a ton of time at the free throw line. Averages about seven and a half free throws attempted per game. That's his first point of the game. Now his first two Jays averaging 16 and a half points per game. The preseason player of the year in the American Conference. Gonna stick with this 2-3 zone. 
UCF hanging around the final minute without huge offensive contributions from Taylor and Aubrey Dawkins. As Chris Harris almost got it to go for the M1, but it's been an adventure at the free throw line for Chris so far today. Not a good free throw shooter, and he's 0 for 3. Boy, Dejon Duro has had a really nice game. Good drive, gets the ball right into the middle of the lane. And UCF just giving up a straight line drive. That's too easy, and that negated Taco Fall. He had to almost step up, and that drive basically froze him, and it could be dropped off to Harris right under the basket. J Jay Houston is 3 for 10 from the free throw line. A couple of uncharacteristic misses from Corey Davis and Chris Harris, who regularly struggles at the free throw line, tried banking it, or at least that's what we'll say, and that worked. Right now, Houston with a seven-point lead. If they can get a stop and then a score can really extend this lead. Conversely, UCF needs to get a score here to cut into it going into halftime. Taylor, Smith. Great look from Taylor and the finish from Smith. Boy, how beautiful was that? Just really well executed by UCF and a great pass from B.J. Taylor. Five-point lead for Houston. Timeout in the last 32 seconds. 32 and a half left here in the first half. How about the way the Cougars are approaching dealing with the big fella, Taco Fall? Well, they're trying not to get stuck behind Taco Fall and then coming off the opposite big. So the ball comes into the post, and they're immediately coming with the opposite big for a double team in the low post. And then they're trying not to press up. If the ball goes to the opposite big up top, press up on them. You know, because they want to drop down to discourage that pass from going in. And Taco Fall. How many tacos tall is Taco Fall? Because we are in Tex-Mex territory, and I have been partaking <laughs> in the Tex-Mex here in Houston, and it is absolutely spectacular. But 30 tacos to get up to 7-6. And I wonder how many tacos it is for Maria Taylor's height, because she is... Uh, quite a tall lady as well. <laughs> well, it's the first time I've ever felt really short talking to a guy, but guys, Taco is very interesting. He knows three different languages, including his native tongue of Senegal, and his mom will see him play for the first time when they have senior night coming up. So she's more than excited to finally see her son in a UCF uniform, but he's obviously having a big impact on this game tonight. Is, is Taco Fall the tallest guy you've ever interviewed? 100%. <laughs> All basketball players are taller than every football player I've ever interviewed anyway. <laughs> With the 40 tallest guys in the world. I would, I would imagine so. Final 10 seconds here in the half. Dejan Giroux gets to the bucket and it won't go. UCF has a chance for a last shot. Oh, and it's going to be too late. No bucket on the alley-oop. A good finish from Aubrey Dawkins. It was pretty, but not in time. And Houston will go to the locker room with a five-point lead. Well, Terrell Allen just didn't know the time when he put that up. Maria has Kelvin Sampson. All right, coach, obviously a big part of the defensive scout is containing Taco Fall and B.J. Taylor. How did your team handle that challenge in the first? I felt good. You know, it hurts when our, our best defender, Galen, went out with a um, little neck injury. We were a lot better defensive team wearing there. But, you know, both teams are playing hard. Our kids are, are fighting. Our kids are fighting. What's Galen's status for coming back in the second half? I'm, I'm not sure, Maria. We're going to go find out uh, right now. If he can go, he'll start. All right, thanks, coach. All right. Kelvin, Maria, thank you. Houston having a fight from UCF here in the Fertitta Center where they have never lost since renovations 33.